In this Cricut tutorial for beginners, I'm showing you all four different Cricut Dollar Tree Christmas in July projects that will be super easy to do at home. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants and this is another Christmas in July episode. We are doing a couple of these over on the crafty.net YouTube channel so be sure to check those out. They'll be listed and linked down below. But today we are diving into four different Dollar Tree Cricut projects. Now I'm saving my favorite for last but what I need you all to do is to let me know down in the comments which of the four is your favorite. So again, please let me know because I am dying to find out. But for starters, let's go ahead and dive in to actually layering HTV on a Dollar Tree shirt. I'm actually using this Gildan t-shirt right here. I was honestly a little shook to find these at my Dollar Tree. They had so many different options, but this is the one I'm using right here. And we will also be using this file from crafty.net. Dear Santa, before I explain, how much do you know already? I, I'm here for this, y'all. I'm so obsessed with this file. So since we do have unlimited downloads, unlimited access to everything on the site, I'm gonna go in here and download the SVG version like so. And then let's hop over here to Cricut Design Space. Now, this is already uploaded, so let's go ahead and size this to fit onto our t-shirt. Now, this is a youth medium, so let me come over here, click on templates, type in here shirt, click on classic t-shirts, and then let's come up here and change this over to a kid's short sleeve, and then change that over to a medium. There we go. We can go ahead and zoom in on this, and then just resize this to fit. All right, so I'm thinking that that right there will look pretty good. Let's go ahead and roll with that and come up here to the top right and click on make it. And since we are using HTV, let's go in here and mirror all of these mats like so, all of these colors. And then come down here towards the bottom right and click on continue. Now for the cut settings, since I am using StarCraft SoftFlex, I am gonna go in here and click on Everyday Iron-On. However, I do already have this all cut out and weeded out already, as you can see here. So here is each of our layers. And what I'm gonna do is go in here and basically apply each layer down onto the shirt. Now for that, I am using my StarCraft 12 inch by 15 inch eight in one craft heat press. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I do have this already preheated to 285 degrees for the StarCraft SoftFlex HTV. So let's go ahead and first off preheat our shirt just for a few seconds. Now I always have to go ahead and apply the largest layer first in 99.9% .9 of, the, of the cases. So let's go ahead and grab the biggest layer, which I think is this white layer right here. And I typically like my design to start around two to three finger widths below the collar. Let's go ahead and lay this out onto our, our mat here. And I always like to use a cover sheet, and in this case, that is AKA a Teflon sheet. So let's go ahead and cover this up. And what we'll do is actually go in here and tack each of these layers down. So with HTV, if you didn't know already, each time you apply HTV down, it's gonna shrink up a little bit. And we don't want it to shrink up too much on one layer so that it doesn't actually fit in with the other layers like once we apply those down. So to actually overcome that, we'll tack each of these layers down for just a couple seconds, just enough to get that adhesive warm and hot and enough to actually stick down to the shirt. All right, so that should be good enough. Let's go ahead and remove this and actually, <laughs> It went ahead and pulled up my carrier sheet for me, so perfect. Let's go in here and apply down the second largest. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll just tack this down for a couple seconds. And then for our last layer, we'll do the exact same thing. All right, so now that all the layers are down, let's go ahead and cover it up with the entire Teflon sheet one more time. And we'll do the full press this time for around eight seconds. And there we have it. Now for this Christmas in July video, I really wanted to find things from the Dollar Tree that was available all year round. And this is no exception. Now I'm not entirely sure if this little house shape is all year round. However, I haven't seen like these little dry erase boards in the Dollar Tree for quite some time now. So I'm pretty sure this this concept in general is year round. However, you might wanna go ahead and grab some of these just in case, cause this idea is so cute if I do say so myself. So what we'll do is actually hop over here to crafty.net and I'll show you the design we're using for this. 
All right, so this is the file right here that says, in this house, we laugh and play and sing jingle all the way. So this is an SVG file. However, anyone can go in here and actually download this as a PNG with a one-click download. Now I have already gotten like the general idea, like the general measurements of however big I want my design to be on here. And I have already created a custom size inside of Canva. This is completely free. I am not using the paid version of Canva whatsoever. You can do all this with sublimation absolutely free. So what I'll do is actually go ahead and click and drag our file right over here and onto the screen and then bring this over here and onto our, our page. Now, I am gonna go ahead and kind of crop down the edges like so, and then resize this. Now, whenever you are resizing, as you can see while I'm moving this little resize handle, you can actually see the measurement right here as well, where it says 3.2 inches wide and 4.3 inches tall. So let's go ahead and kind of move that around to be however big we want it to be. And then we also need to go in here and actually mirror this since we are sublimating it. So that is super important. And to actually do that inside of Canva, let's come up here, click on flip, flip horizontal, just like so. I'm also gonna go ahead and come up here and click on share. And then for download, let's go ahead and save this or download this as a PDF print and then click on download like so. All right, so here is our file. Now this may look a little bit different depending upon what computer you're using or what printer you're using. But I'm gonna come up here, click on the printer icon, and then click on more settings. And I always print using the system dialog. So I do have this set up for sublimation, but really the main things that I find important is first off having the scale to be set at 100% so that it prints out to be the same size that you need it for your surface. Also, I'm wanting to make sure that the media type is photo matte paper and that the quality is set to best. Now, I will say this, I did go ahead and skip ahead and print this out and here is our design right here. So what we're gonna do now is actually go in here and apply this down to our surface. I'm just gonna go in here and kind of trim off the edges just to make sure that it all does fit properly. Now I am also gonna be using some heat resistant tape and for this, whenever I was doing some little trial runs or test runs with this, I found there to be somewhat of an issue with actual tape peeling up the dry erase portion of the board. So before I actually stick this down, I'm actually gonna stick the tape to my shirt just a couple of times to get some of that stickiness off. Also, just to help catch any blowout, I am taking a little piece of butcher paper and laying it over top of our, our sublimation design. Now, to actually press this in here, because this is inside of a little, a little inset, I am using an easy press mini, like this one right here. Now, I am gonna go in here and just be kind of careful. I am gonna make sure that I am applying even pressure, somewhat firm pressure, but just not too, too much pressure either. Then I'm gonna do this overall, making sure that I cover the entire design for at least 60 seconds or so. I also have this easy press set to the highest setting, which should be around 400 degrees. All right, so now let's make a little Santa cookie dish with this little Dollar Tree glass plate right here. So let's head over here to crafty.net and we are using this file right here. So let's go ahead and download the SVG version. Now mine is not food safe. However, we will be applying this down to the bottom side of the plate where it will actually never come in contact with the food. So for that, we will need to go in here and just kind of flip everything all together by coming up here and clicking on flip. And currently, there is a little bit of a glitch in Cricut Design Space. You would normally click on flip horizontal. However, we need to click on flip vertical for it to actually flip horizontally. That is just currently the case. Hopefully that doesn't stick around for too long. However, we do need to go in here and actually go ahead and resize this down to fit onto the bottom side of the plate. Now, this bottom diameter is four and a half inches round. So let's go ahead and come up here, make sure that the little dimensions, the little padlock is locked. And then for the width, put in here 4.5. Let's go ahead and come up here and click on make it. Let's click on continue. And since I am using the StarCraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl, we would just click on premium vinyl permanent glossy or on vinyl. However, I do already have this all cut out and weeded and it is right here. So as you can see, there are two layers. We will go in here and apply down the white layer first. So that is obviously 
visible through the plate and then we'll cover it up with the red. Now with the StarCraft HD, the, the vinyl is the same color all the way through so you don't have to worry about it being a different color on the underside or anything like that. So before we apply this down though, let's go ahead and get some rubbing alcohol and clean the surface. And this just gets off any film or anything weird that could prevent our vinyl from getting a really good adhesion to the plate. I am peeling off some transfer tape. Just trimming that off like so. And then we'll go ahead and apply it down to the white layer first. And to help line everything up, I am using some parchment paper. All right, so next up is these infamous pizza pans right here. And yes, I am gonna be turning this into a door hanger. So first things first, I am gonna spray paint this with a black spray paint and then seal it really good with a StarCraft Pure Coat. And here it is all finished and dried with the black paint on it. So let me go on here now and actually apply down our design, which is this one right here from crafty.net. I'm honestly just in love with this design. I think it's just so freaking classy. And what I'll do is go in here and just download the SVG version. And now I have already pre-measured the main portion of our pizza pan and that is 11 and a quarter inch. So I have already resized this to be 11 and a quarter inches. And of course, I already had this cut out and weeded out and ready to apply to our pizza pan. I'm just pulling off enough transfer tape for our design and then applying our design face first down onto the sticky side of that transfer tape. And then very carefully peeling the backing paper off of that vinyl. I'm also gonna use the parchment paper method for this as well. Now I am slightly cheating just a little bit. I am using a pre-made bow that I got from Walmart last year for just a few bucks, but um, that's just because I suck at making bows. That's all. <laughs> so I am gonna go ahead and hot glue this on here. However, before I do that, I am using some rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm actually gonna go ahead and just outline the, the pizza pan with this. Hey, real quick, if you are new around here to this channel and you also want to learn how to best use your Cricut or maybe how to do sublimation, then definitely consider stamping that subscribe button. Also consider ringing that little bell for all of the notifications. I'm putting out new Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials multiple times every single week and you do not want to miss out on a single crafty minute. Also, if you liked the episode, maybe you learned something new, consider stamping that like button and dropping a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to let me know which of the projects was your favorite. And until next time, stay crafty, y'all.